portals in a fountain? Not terribly practical. It was a secret passage. Anariette and I would use it to... Hide from your governess. Which luckily she noted down in her diary, thus I knew where to await you. Never mind that. Has the young lady agreed to help clean up the mess she's made? She has. And stop treating me as if I were a child. Would you prefer I treated you like the lying manipulator you are? Sianna, you've already run afoul of one vampire. Don't start a fight with another, all right? Then tell said other vampire to stop taunting me. I shall do my utmost. Let's go. Really want to be done with this. Nice place, isn't it? Offers a lovely view of the valley. On a clear day, you can see the outlines of Duntime. Is it, though? A ruin like any other, I think. Ah, uh, so sensitive. So aware. Honestly, what did Declaff ever see in you? Perhaps he'll tell you himself. Nervous. Mm hmm. It's always a bit nerve wracking meeting an ex. Especially so when said ex is a vampire. I doubt he'll be in the mood for jests. I know. Ugh. May I be honest? Yes. I'm nervous. I really would prefer just to run off. I gave my word I would help, I know. But how much is that worth? Yet I owe him this meeting. And that is that. Let's get ready. Dedloff will be here any moment now. simple. I... Oh no. It's very simple. You either deceived me or not. 
in forgiving you I grieve. For now we must part. What? But how? The ribbon. Ha! Seems I've been fooled again. She will pay for this sooner or later. She will pay! You never should have meddled with her!
die, witch! To me. Be gone. I can't let him. I insist. My, what a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Usually wear something different, better suited to my trade. Got nothing against this particular outfit, though. Just don't exactly feel comfortable in it. And I despise formal occasions. Hmm. Nothing one can't get accustomed to. 
Now, be so kind as to stand still. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else. Which calls for lordly, glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful. Pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Ceremonies. Medals honoring virtues. Just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue, compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory, after all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victims' names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Regis, Boot Black didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together, assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It lies in your hands now to see if you are able to present my handiwork at the ceremony with the dignity it is due. Or if you will first destroy it, crawling about the city's underbelly. Promise to be careful. The swordsman! Good to see you! Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. Step on up! Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then. I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the souls that wear them. Clean boots, clean souls. A fine slogan. <laughs> <laughs> 